lesson today is about the ticket categories. With ticket categories, you can basically uh, control the view of the tickets by what information is being displayed. Why is that so handy? Because you can control uh, the limited amount of information. If you get an information overload, everybody knows we don't know where to look. If somebody needs to work on a ticket and only gets presented that information that he needs to work on that particular ticket, it's much easier to focus on. You can find these under admin and then in the service deck, there's the ticket section and then the first option is the ticket categories. By default, you're lucky. Uh, there's already a whole bunch of them in the system. You can see that in this column system, there's a standard, there's a non-editable one, which is good. It's inactive. That's basically always your default where you can go back if something might go wrong. You can edit them a lot, but this way you can always go back, go over a little hamburger menu. You still have the option to do a copy and that way you can always uh, start from scratch from a, a standard one. There's a couple of them for the Dado RMM, the alerts. I'm going to create a new one. Let's say you would not, you, you don't use the Dado RMM tool. You can just basically go over here and you can say inactivate. In this case, I'm just going to quickly inactivate those ones. I'm not going to use them. Uh, in here, we have some uh, examples already for a new employee or sales engineer request. But today I'm going to show you to create one from scratch. And I call it like uh, monitoring alerts. You press the button new. You can put in your uh, the type of category name, how you would like it. It's active. You can put a nickname if you would like to. Let's scroll a little bit down. There's the header. Basically, these are, uh, are almost the standard fields, but you hover over the little hamburger menu and have the option to edit the field. Uh, but there's not much which you can choose. Only the ticket type is going to be service request, an incident, a problem, or a change request. In this case, we're going to call it a monitoring alert. So we can change this one to an alert already. Ticket category, same thing too. You have only the options for the list values that you want to put in there. Uh, do you want to change it? Yes or no. In this case, this one is not yet there. So that's why we can't change it. And your title, you also have the option to, to do a default uh, title for this particular uh, monitoring alert. Maybe you can say, uh, that, that any ticket in this one has a title that, that is called alert colon and then whatever you can put that behind it. That's already uh, predefined. And you have the main body. Uh, there's, uh, basically these ones are fixed. You, you can control the, the, the selection of where you want to have it. Yeah, hopefully you guys saw that how I move them around. There's a timeline. Timeline is there's nothing uh, like a hamburger menu that you can edit them and change them out. Uh, but a timeline, usually for an alert, there's no true SLA or timeline involved. So visible, you can uncheck that box and then it's not visible. Very handy feature. Uh, tags, it's question two. Do you have tags on a monitoring alert? If you use tags, great. If you don't use them, you can put them also here as a checkbox. And there and related items, you can also uncheck that box. Now this is going to be for a alert, so we're not going to do anything with the change info fields. Right now, I'm going to go quickly through it because this gives you the example. So there's a section that says visible change info fields, and here on the bottom you say hidden change info fields. Since we're not going to go uh, list anything for change info for this particular category, I'm going to move them all to the hidden fields. I don't want to have anything visible on the ticket for this particular view. So now all those fields are under the hidden section. But the change approvals, okay, there's nothing there, that's good. Checklists, I can define even which checklist I want to have available for this particular uh, category. Right now I'm not going to choose anything because I don't know exactly what alert will be coming in. Form templates, also you can control what kind of templates you would like to have available for these, uh, these monitoring alerts. You can even say all, then they're all available. You can say none, and none of available, but you can also say custom. And this is where you can say, you know what? Okay, I want to have a form template uh, that they can use it. Right now, you can see everything is unavailable, but let's say this password reset, that's not part of a monitoring alert. So you could say, okay, that one is not available for this particular uh, template. And the same thing too, you can do for uh, time entry. That one, you can also, you know, that one is not available. Let's see, main body we did. 
header, we can collapse them, collapse them all. It gives a little bit quick to, uh, to go through it. We have a notification template. Again, you can choose if you want to have a template uh, only available or everything available. Tags are already turned off, so right now I don't have to do nothing here. Other option, there's a couple of options that you can do, uh, that you can do for the rounding of, of, the, of the time entries. Since this is going to be a monitoring alert, I say do not round. I want to have my actual time there. There's going to be a stopwatch enabled. That's always good for the user to have. And the rest is all kind of default for these ones. And then you have a time entry node. As you can see here, everything is already under the hidden fields. Uh, this is only if there would be a, a time entry node screens uh, quickly on one screen. Now I think, okay, this is going to be kind of done. We did a lot. Well, guess what? There's two more tabs over here. So now we go to the details. And again, you see a whole bunch of text. And this is kind of because the, the, the ticket view, as you might have seen, is split up in three different sections on the screen too. So we did first the general section. Now we have the details section. And there's a lot, a lot of stuff that you can configure. Again, over here, you see the body where you can uh, move items up and down. Um, for example, you can say issue type. You can here, you can do edit uh, field. You have the drop down menu. And you can already say this is going to be always maybe a standard uh, service that you can uh, apply. And you say, okay. Then sub issue type, you can, you can maybe choose it, but you say, you know what, this one needs to always be filled out. So that one you make required. Source, as we know, it's, it's a monitoring alert. Maybe we just say it's through the alert box. Uh, you can either way. Uh, click on here to hide field, we also can put it down, but in this case we can say hide field. Estimated hours, you can also put it in service level agreement, we said it's not applicable for this one, we can say hide field. The queue would be already a monitoring alert, it's something we can, uh, we can uh, automatically assign, so we can hide that field too. Primary resource, usually it's in the, in the the main uh, primary resource, so secondary resource, I'm going to turn it off for this one. Configuration item, yes, you want to have that. Billing, usually everything is on the contract. And as you can see over here, the whole section I can even do as a, as a height section. So I'm just going to remove that. And then the rest will be all in the hidden fields. Okay. Then you still have a lot on the insights. That's on the right side of the tickets. There's also a whole bunch of uh, insights that you have there. And these are the visible insights, so the company account that you want to have there. Ticket summary, how much time has it been worked, usually a, a good one. Um, configuration item, it's always a good one when, uh, when you know which one you're working on. But opportunity is not an option that you would like to have over here because you're just working on a monitoring alert. So I'm going to move the one to. Then here on the hidden insights, these are all the ones that you can still basically pull up. You see, there's a lot of, a lot of options over here. So you might say, you know what, I'm going to uh, move something up because it's maybe part of a project. So I do want to see that one. In this case, I'm not going to turn it on. I'm going to show you in a little bit different way. But first, I'm going to press save and close right now to make sure that, uh, uh, that I have this option. And now you can see here, there's two issues uh, that I have in my system. Sub issue the type cannot be required unless issue type is required. So let me go back to that one and make sure that the, both are being uh, as required. As you can see, you can't really make any mistakes. Autotask will tell you what needs to be done. Even I uh, don't know exactly all the specific uh, features that that needs to have. And here, primary resource or queue are hidden. Both must be visible to select queue is required when primary resource is blank. So in this case, I'm gonna make it that the uh, queue is then a, uh, an available field over here. Make field visible. And now I should basically press save and close. And it's been processed. Here on the bottom, you can see the monitoring alert. And now even you can press on the little uh, edit button. And we can over here, I've got to show it to here. Over here, this is where you can uh, display the color. I'm going to make it a. That this way it stands out. I'm going to show you what it will do for a ticket. For example, here I have a ticket open. Let me open it up in default rate. Here in the top, this is where it says the standard category. And kind of a little bit pay attention to all the information that we have here on the left. 
Here, remember, we have the timeline over here and we have the company contact. There's lots of information here on the side. Now I'm going to edit this ticket and I'm going to select that new category. And there on the bottom is my new category. And once done, I will press save. And now it's being applied that new category. And it will show you all the new fields. Well, not the new fields, the less fields, less information visible on the screen. And that should give you a much clearer in view. As you can see over here, um, it's a little cleaner on the left side. Uh, here, the, time, the timeline is gone. And also the left side is much more clean. It's just the information that you need. And as you can see over here, this gives you a much cleaner view. Uh, the first view was very bogged down with a whole bunch of, uh, of information. But right now, you just have a clear view. And as you can see, I still have some options in there. You can even uh, control it more or less. Like here, we had the, the queue and the assignment. Uh, so we can even uh, allow that the primary resource can be, uh, can be left blank. No assignment, no queue. and means even less. Um, I put in there that I wanted to have my issue type and sub-issue type. But also, you can make them both non-required and fill them in by default. And those ones are going to be gone as well. So. There's uh, lots and lots that you can uh, modify. But as you can see right now, it's pretty clean. I don't have to scroll in here to get more information. Uh, right now, there's a little bit of information here, but also this sideline, there's uh, all the information that I need here is right away in my screen. Now, this way, you can control also the other ones. Of course, you can go in there and you can say edit again. And this is how you can change the category. Now, if you would like to say, okay, I make a category for all my changes, you would kind of do the opposite of the one that we have here for the monitoring alert. And then you enable all those fields that have to do with the, the change info uh, requests. Remember there was here on the, the first section, change approvals and the change info fields. These ones you would been, then be uh, all to the top. And maybe you also say, okay, by default, this one goes into the queue for the change alerts. And that's way how you can make a category for every kind of big, uh, big ticket category and you can change whatever you need. The billing person might want to have a different ticket gallery, but in this case, it, it, you need to focus on this for your, your workers, for your technicians, for your engineers. They need to see the fields that they need to be working on. So it might be that you always uh, close the billing information for them. That's something that would only be on the back end for a, uh, a billing person. Hopefully that gives you enough uh, insights on how to do these uh, ticket galleries and um, if you have any questions, go to our Facebook group.